Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, we will be going over how to perform closing entries for a corporation. So we are moving on to step eight. We are going to be using our adjusted trial balance here, our adjusted trial balance and our general journal tab all the way to page four in order to do our closing entries. If you would like to follow along, this spreadsheet along with other resources are available in our website. I will link to that in the description. All right, so the first thing that I wanna make sure that I kind of, uh, a little disclaimer for when we're dealing with these closing entries is typically in academic accounting and in the real world, there are two main methods of doing closing entries. There is a four entry system and a two entry system. The four entry system uses an account called income summary, right? Um, in the two entry system, we wouldn't see income summary. So if you have a company that does not include income summary on their chart of accounts, so here's our chart of accounts. If there is no income summary there, your textbook most likely uses the two entry system. So here, our company does not have income summary. I'm going to be using the two entry system for this particular one, but down below, I am going to really quickly just show you how to do the four entry system, just in case that's the way that your instructor wants you to do closing entries. So keep in mind, these are closing entries for a corporation, so they do differ slightly from what we would see in a, um, in a sole proprietorship or a partnership. So let's go ahead and let's get started. We have two main entries. Our first entry should be closing our revenues and expenses. And I'm going to kind of just uh, italicize this to, uh, to capital, sorry, corporation, to retained earnings. So our first closing entry is going to require that we close revenues and expenses to retain earnings. So the two items that we want to find first is our revenues and our expenses. Let's move over to our adjusted trial balance here. So when we're dealing with this, what you might want to do on your um, adjusted trial balance first is categorize all of those different accounts. So find your assets, liabilities, capital, so on and so forth. So let's take a moment to do that real quick. I'm just going to change this here. So we have an asset, an asset, an asset, an asset, and this is good practice because uh, we wanna make sure that you're able to categorize those assets very quickly and efficiently. Um, eventually, it should become almost second nature. And when you do recognize one that you don't know how to categorize, then that's when you can start asking your professor some clarifying questions. Keep in mind, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset, so I'm going to star that one, just designate it as contra. Liability, 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 capital, 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 capital. Contra capital, contra, oops, contra capital, contra capital. And then we have, this is the important part. Here's our revenues and here's our expenses. This is what we were looking for here. All right. <clears throat> so keep in mind, the purpose of closing entries is to close out the balance in the account to a balance of zero. So if consulting revenue currently has a balance of 122,000 credit, and we want to bring that to a balance of zero so that we can start fresh next period, we are going to do the opposite of the balance. So in this case, if it's a credit, we are going to debit it. So we will debit so consulting. Consulting revenue for $122,000. Good. That is our only revenue account. So we're done with that one. Uh, next, we will be moving on to our expenses. Uh, here are our expenses. We can ignore the one with the balance of zero. For all of these expenses, you'll notice that they have a debit balance. So to close them out, you're going to do the opposite. You are going to credit them. So we have salary expense. 
rent expense, supplies expense, depreciation expense, advertising expense, utilities expense. And to close them out, we do the opposite. This will bring their balances to zero. Good. Now you'll notice here, I'm just going to kind of uh, subtotal up all of these columns. I'm going to delete this. Keep in mind, you don't want to have subtotals typically on uh, journal entry sheets, but I just want to kind of show. Notice that we have here a de debit balance of 122000 and a credit balance of 25500 That's where we know that we have an issue here. So in this case, we are going to have to plug in whatever we need on our credit side in order to make them balance. So if we have debits, of 122,000 and credits of 25,500. That means that we have a missing 96,500 there. Right? So that's going to be the amount of what we're going to call our plug. Now here is where this little italicized portion is going to come into play here. Uh, the amount that we close to is going to be that 96,500. So notice we're closing revenues and expenses to a balance of zero, and then we are essentially increasing retained earnings by the difference, right? Now keep in mind, revenues minus expenses equals net income. This is essentially us increasing retained earnings by net income, which if we wanted to, we could go over to our financial statements, and we can see that that is what we did on our statement of retained earnings right here. Our second entry is going to be to close dividends. Again, to retained earnings. So when we're closing our dividends, we have two dividend accounts. We have uh, cash dividends for our common stock and cash dividends for our preferred stock. Notice that those two amounts are debits. So in order to close out the, this 8,000 and this 2,000, we are going to have to credit those accounts. So I'm going to skip a line since I know debits come first and I'm going to credit cash dividends for common and cash dividends for preferred. All right, and those amounts are going to be 8,000 and 2,000. So now you can see that we have 10,000 on our credit side, but nothing on our debit side. So again, we are going to have to plug in order to make them balance. And where do we plug to? Again, retained earnings. Perfect. Those are closing entries. We essentially made retained earnings go up by net income and down by dividends. And now all of those accounts are going to have, not all of those accounts, all of those temporary accounts, our revenues, our expenses, and our dividends are going to have balances of zero. And retained earnings will now be updated to start a new period with the correct balance. Okay. Now, if you're using a four entry system, um, it is a uh, kind of similar, but uh, there are a couple things that we're going to have to consider. So our first entry, whenever we are using a four entry system, now remember if you're using a two entry system, you don't need to know this, but if you're using four entry, I'd love for you to be able to see what it should look like. Our first entry is going to be to close revenues to a special account called income summary. So on January 31st, we already know what it's like to close revenues. We did it before. We are going to debit consulting revenue for 122,000. And that's it for closing. So we're going to have to balance that account by closing it to income summary to make it balance. That is your first entry. Uh, your next entry is going to be to close expenses. 
to income summary. Uh, again, keep in mind when it comes to our expenses, we're going to have to credit those. So I'm going to skip a line. I'm actually going to steal some of these here just to make it a little easier on us. Uh, credit all of our expenses. And here's all of our expense amounts. And where are we going to close those items to? Income summary. Our next entry, entry number three, is going to be to close income summary to retained earnings. All right, so here again, we're going to be dealing with uh, income summary. Um, in order to understand this, we might want to do a little T account so we can see where all of these little balances came from. Uh, let me go ahead and do that real quick. So we have income summary here. Um, with our income summary account, uh, what did we do to income summary in our first entry? We credited it for 122000 in our second entry, which I actually did not finish. Let's go ahead and sum up all of those expenses to make it balance. We debited it for 25500 So what you're going to do is ask yourself, what is the new balance in income summary? Keep in mind debits, offset, credits, so we're going to subtract. The balance in income summary is 96,500. So if we have a 96,500 credit balance in income summary, how are we going to close that out? Because now we're closing income summary. We are going to debit income summary for that 96,500. And since we have a missing credit, what are we going to credit to? retained earnings and that should look familiar because that's essentially what we did up here essentially when you're doing the four entry system you are doing everything that you did in the first entry in your first three we're just using this special account called income summary to put revenues and then put expenses and then put that subtotal into retained earnings but our last entry, when we are doing our four entry system, close dividends to retained earnings, that one stays exactly the same. So just like we did before, we are going to credit our dividend accounts to close them out, and we are going to close them to retained earnings. So that one actually stays exactly the same as what we saw before. No real changes there. Right. So whether you're using the two entry system or the four entry system, the overall result is the same. You are still making retained earnings go up by net income. You are making retained earnings go down by dividends and you are closing out all of your temporary accounts, your revenues, your expenses, and your dividends. Okay, so since we're done with our closing entries, our next step, if we go back to our instructions, is going to be to move on to posting the closing entries to a general ledger. I'm going to do this in the next video. So until then, thank you so much for watching and happy studying.